morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Solars and here is your detailed weather forecast update for Wednesday the 8th of October 2025. Heaps to get through today, thunderstorms forecast in a pretty significant capacity through central Queensland, southeast Queensland and also parts of northern New South Wales. The rainfall up in north Queensland didn't materialise but there is a lot more on the forecast, we're going to talk about that as well, and a stormy week ahead for the Northern Territory in Western Australia. All the details on these weather events plus more coming up in today's weather forecast update. Uh, if you are brand new to the channel please do consider subscribing but let's get stuck straight into things with our top story which is going to be those severe thunderstorms through parts of central southeastern and northern new south wales and queensland we're looking at a pretty extensive storm outbreak through thursday friday and then by the looks of things on sunday as well especially into queensland sunday could be a day to watch so as you can see temperatures are beginning to rise through a wide swathe of queensland especially into the southwest birdsville already at 30 degrees and it's not even nine o'clock down there so it is really going to get quite warm throughout the course of today and that's a trend that we're going to see throughout the remainder of this week so whilst no storm activity is forecast today. We'll see a few isolated thunderstorms into the northeastern corner of South Australia, but no thunderstorms for Queensland or New South Wales. They are going to start off pretty early on tomorrow morning by the looks of things with a line of thunderstorms into the northwestern corner of New South Wales, north of White Cliffs and up around Wilcannia and Wanaring. We're going to see this line of showers and thunderstorms and move in towards the central parts of New South Wales and push some thunderstorm development around Moree and Narrabri into the uh, early afternoon hours of tomorrow afternoon. And not only is it going to be quite warm around some of these locations, Moree, Narrabri, Armadale, Inverell, Tamworth, all looking at temperatures well above the October average uh, through tomorrow afternoon. We're also looking at some pretty significant humidity values and it looks like we're going to have the conditions conducive for a thunderstorm outbreak and potentially a severe thunderstorm outbreak in this part of New South Wales tomorrow afternoon. It's going to be a very isolated one. We're not talking about an extensive or a widespread thunderstorm outbreak and the main risks actually seem to be heavy rainfall at this point in time and it's going to be an ongoing one uh, persisting late into the evening hours and into very early Friday morning before moving into the northeast of New South South Wales and the risk of thunderstorms diminishing after about midnight by the looks of things. There is a chance of thunderstorms into south central parts of Queensland, particularly around Fallon and St George, but we're not expecting a widespread thunderstorm outbreak into Queensland and it looks like there's just fringe chances of thunderstorms into the south central parts of Queensland. If they do develop, consider yourself lucky. If they don't develop well, it definitely isn't a high chance on the forecast, so it wasn't overly wrong there. It's Friday, that's the day to watch, at least for Queensland, and there's in, in this two-day outbreak, at least, extensive thunderstorm development expected in the early afternoon hours around Charleville, Augafella, Tambo, Injune, and Roma. We're looking at some really solid thunderstorms in this pocket here between Augafella and Injune, and particularly between Charleville and Roma. Uh, down here, we're looking at some very solid chances of thunderstorms, and they could be some very strong thunderstorms at that. So uh, for Marivan and uh, Mitchell, we could be talking about some pretty significant thunderstorms around there. Charleville as well, standing out as a pretty significant high uh, chance or significantly high chance of seeing some strong thunderstorms. These develop quite quickly on into the early afternoon hours and these will be classic strong severe thunderstorms for Queensland. We're talking heavy rainfall, damaging winds and the chance of large or even giant hailstones, particularly around Charleville and Augafella. The thunderstorm index here from the uh, Eastern Air forecast, this is lightning density in uh, square kilometres so you can see very dense lightning activity expected around Morven and uh, Mitchell especially into the later afternoon hours but even into the early afternoon hours around Charleville and or Gathella, very extensive and quite widespread dense lightning activity is expected and this will run right down towards Roma in fact south of Roma up to uh, or down towards Surat and then uh, right down to the New South Wales and the Queensland border actually around Gundawindi and uh, Warwick and Stanford will be seeing the chance of thunderstorms albeit they will be a lot weaker down there so the severe thunderstorm chances are looking very solid for Friday and that's because we've got high humidity values and also some very high temperature values as well you can see into the later afternoon hours mid-level humidity values do begin to increase across Across this part of Queensland and that's going to provide, uh, present a very moist environment for these thunderstorms to develop in. Now the upper levels the humidity isn't exactly uh, great especially across a wide swathe of this part of Queensland humidity values are going to be there but they're not exactly anything too special. Now they, this can get the job done for severe thunderstorms we've seen it time and time again especially around this time of the year for Queensland but we're not likely to see widespread supercell activity which is the very dangerous and very organized severe thunderstorms uh, in this part of Queensland at least from this thunderstorm outbreak here, the chance of supercells is going to be there, which means we also have the chance of giant hailstones and weak tornado events, uh, but it doesn't look like the chance is going to be too extensive or too widespread throughout the course of tomorrow. It is definitely there though, so these thunderstorms could get quite nasty, they could get very nasty very quickly actually. Another factor that I would like to talk about is the convective available potential energy values. They have dropped a little bit on since yesterday's forecast. You can see in the early morning hours, which is normally when convective available potential energy is at its highest, these values are between 
1200 to 1600 where the thunderstorms are going to develop but they drop a little bit into the afternoon hours down to below a thousand in a few locations so this again can get the job done for thunderstorms but i imagine a lot of these thunderstorms will lack uh, a, a high amount of precipitation and they also won't be that organized in nature which kind of takes the edge of those extremely severe thunderstorms and presents us with just a severe thunderstorm risk it's funny how crazy the queensland weather scene can be where we're talking about severe thunderstorms being a relieving thing where very severe thunderstorms which can occur at this time of the year anywhere around queensland are now not in the forecast we're relieved that we're only talking about severe thunderstorms if that makes sense queensland can be wild for severe weather and not just from thunderstorms but also from rainfall and cyclones there's also an isolated thunderstorm risk into the northeast of new south wales through tomorrow afternoon and evening there's much healthier convective available potential energy values around coffs harbour grafton and kempsey and we could also see some strong thunderstorms down around the border as well between queensland and new south wales around wollongara and warwick these thunderstorms will be very isolated in nature most likely pulse thunderstorms as well but we could be seeing some lightning activity and some thunderstorm activity especially into the earlier afternoon hours before five o'clock and again convective available potential energy values around coffs harbour remaining very solid indeed and if we have a look at the uh, mid-level environment as well with that moisture coming in from the uh, northern parts of the Tasman Sea it does look pretty good into the mid-levels there's plenty of moisture in the atmosphere for these thunderstorms to make the most of it's just up into the upper levels uh, we don't have that moisture so it is a similar setup to I guess what we had last week around this time last week actually on the Sunshine Coast the environment is just a little bit dry so I'm not writing off the chance of severe thunderstorms into the northeast of New South Wales on Friday but it isn't looking overly likely and if any do develop they'll be very isolated and very sporadic in nature and again, border communities such as Toowoomba, Warwick and Wollongara, for example, not expecting widespread thunderstorm activity. Any thunderstorms that do develop in that vicinity will be very isolated in nature. And of course, it goes without saying, southeast Queensland, Brisbane and the Gold Coast, not expecting thunderstorm activity either. Not until Sunday. Have a look at this. The forecast is actually remaining consistent since yesterday. Uh, yes, it is actually. I thought that it just went through an update since I researched this video update. But you can see very extensive thunderstorm activity. A lot of this will actually be severe thunderstorm activity into southeast Queensland, but also through parts of central Queensland as well, out into our thunderstorm alley north of Charleville, Orgathella and Tambo, and extending right down towards Brisbane and the Gold Coast Sunday afternoon and evening, widespread thunderstorm activity expected. And this would be severe thunderstorms, no doubt about it, just given the setup here. Heaps of lightning activity and again, convective available potential energy values, very solid into the Brisbane city area and some pretty healthy convective available potential energy values as well into the Granite Belt and Darling Downs and just over the border, uh, over the ranges as well into central parts of Queensland. So now Sunday becomes a day to watch. We were talking about this yesterday saying that if this becomes a consistent aspect on the forecast models, which it now has because it's persisted for three days, then we're going to have to watch Sunday quite closely. But there is one very heavy grain of salt that I need to give to you to take with this forecast. The forecast models are not showing much congruency and especially considering it is just Sunday now, five days away, we should be able to get a pretty accurate picture of what we can see. The GFS is going to be calling for thunderstorms down around the border between New South Wales and Queensland. So some strong thunderstorms possible down there. A few good thunderstorms also possible into the Brisbane city area by the looks of things. Icon model calling for these thunderstorms to be inland from the Sunshine Coast and also just through inland parts of central Queensland in general. And the access convective forecast model is calling for these thunderstorms to remain much further inland and around the border. So there's four different locations here that these forecast models are calling for thunderstorms. Whichever is the most likely right now is kind of which forecast you like the most. I find the Eastern Blue Earth to be the most accurate for long range thunderstorm projections like this one. So that would by default make Southeast Queensland the uh, hotspot for thunderstorm activity on Sunday. But then there's another but. We've got to take into account the impacts from the SSW event, which I'm making a full video on later on today. Uh, and that does kind of reduce the chances of Southeast Queensland seeing uh, heavy rainfall, which obviously means the chances of thunderstorms are also reduced. So it really does leave a massive question mark as to where thunderstorms are expected to occur on Sunday. They will occur in Queensland. We will see a solid outbreak at least somewhere in Queensland on Sunday. There'll be multiple thunderstorms on Sunday. Sunday, but whether or not they're going to be in southeast Queensland, still a little bit too early to tell. I'm going to have to leave that forecast to kind of uh, stew for a couple of days, uh, at least for southeast Queensland by the looks of things. And then beyond that, it doesn't look like there's much in the way of storm chances. Monday looks like it could bring some good thunderstorms to the northern parts of the Sunshine Coast and into the White Bay Burnett forecast district. There looks like there could be some really solid storms there, actually. And then it looks like Tuesday and Wednesday next week, we're going to see some solid thunderstorm activity into central parts of Queensland before it whittles down for a little bit and the rainfall moves a little bit further north. 
And speaking of that rainfall for far north Queensland, where was it last night? It never materialised. Well, it did actually materialise. It all, all fell offshore and very close to the coastline, actually. I did hear about some relatively decent rainfall accumulations north of Cooktown. Some falls into some personal weather stations up there between 25 to 50 millimetres. A lot of that fell earlier on in the day, though. But for the most part, we were, we were talking about nearly triple-figure rainfall accumulations of the Daintree Rainforest and parts of the Cassiri Coast. And a lot of locations didn't even crack 5% of what was on my forecast, at least. It leaves a lot to be wondering why didn't this rainfall develop? Well, it's because that upper level low pressure system, which was going to create that sinking uh, moisture that's going to, was going to cause all of that rainfall, especially for the Daintree Rainforest, it actually slipped right over the Daintree Rainforest, which means that sinking air occurred further offshore. So the rainfall did actually happen, and it happened in a pretty significant capacity. I'm not sure if the radar coverage was actually solid enough to pick it up, uh, but it all fell for the most part offshore from northern Queensland. I'm going to see if I can play through that loop right now and show you exactly what I'm talking about. But you can see we have that steady but almost moderate but heavy rainfall developing or occurring here for hours upon hours at a time just offshore from the North Queensland coastline with a few showers now persisting into early this morning across parts of the Daintree Rainforest and the Cassiri Coast completely missed out as well from this rainfall event. So it didn't materialise and that's just the thing with Northern Queensland rainfall events. They can sometimes happen, they can sometimes not happen and this one busted out big time. It really didn't happen at all. It was a massive nothing burger which is good because the Daintree did not need another absolute saturating ahead of storm season that's for sure. Anyways let's look at the long range rainfall forecast now you can see 14 day rainfall accumulations now beginning to pick up through parts of the Cape York Peninsula and into the Daintree Rainforest and the Cassiri Coast as well. So what are we expecting? Well it's just going to be that southeasterly flow. Steady showers, they could get heavier times through today, tomorrow that leaves off a little bit through tomorrow afternoon and evening by the looks of things and you can see Sunday marginally dry in the morning and the early afternoon. Sunday the showers return again and then it looks like we're going to have a 3 or 4 day period of showery conditions starting Sunday night and especially through Monday and Tuesday next week, looks like rainfall could really begin to pick up and rainfall persisting right out to about Friday or Sunday next week before it finally does peter out a little bit again for the Cassiri Coast and the Daintree Rainforest. So you saw it just there, that southeasterly flow expected to remain strong and it's just going to be steady shower activity throughout the next 14 days or so. Other forecast models calling for relatively similar rainfall accumulations. Actually, you can see the GFS is calling for similar numbers up and towards North Queensland. The GFS has also been calling for some wacky low pressure system kind of development development in towards the middle parts of October. So I would take the GFS forecast with a very heavy pinch of salt and also for locations around Townsville and Mackay, rainfall is, a lot, is going to be a lot lighter. If we do see showers down there, they're not going to amount to 50 millimetres or more like they will in the Cassiri Coast or the Daintree Rainforest. And that's because the monsoon and the trough just hasn't sunk far enough into the Coral Sea for that rainfall to really begin to pipe up. So for North Queensland, rainfall will continue, but it's going to be a lot lighter for Townsville, Mackay and everywhere else in between. For the Cassiri Coast and the Daintree Rainforest, though, rainfall accumulations are going to begin to properly pick up. Now for the Northern Territory and Western Australia, thunderstorms are going to be very extensive after the 10th of October. We're talking about widespread thunderstorm activity through the Northern Territory on Friday the 10th of October, and that kicks off a 10-day period of stormy conditions. You can see Saturday now, Sunday stormy, Monday also stormy, Tuesday stormy, Wednesday stormy, Thursday stormy, Friday stormy, and then you can see this kind of shifts over a little bit towards Western Australia and widespread thunderstorm activity expected over in WA throughout the 17th of October onwards and that kicks off kind of a five or six day thunderstorm outbreak through there. Now this means that the proper wet season rainfall is not far away. We're now seeing uh, proper build up conditions, which is where those ultra humid days come in, those very warm days. We see widespread pulse thunderstorm activity to round everything off. And that's gonna present the Northern Territory in Western Australia with some half decent rainfall accumulations over the next 14 days. When we're talking about this spread of thunderstorm activity that's forecast for the Northern Territory in Western Australia, a lot, a lot of locations, especially uh, north of a line basically between Broome out to about Wave Hill, Elliot, and then across towards Mount Isa in uh, Queensland. Anywhere north that line is expecting widespread thunderstorm activity, and the further north you go, the heavier the rainfall is going to get. And I struggle to believe that there's going to be locations that miss out on rainfall in the next 14 days, especially north of Catherine in the Northern Territory and north of about Halls Creek in Western Australia. Most locations are going to pick up at least one or two thunderstorm days, uh, and that means that we are going to see some pretty widespread rainfall accumulations through this part of WA and the Northern Territory. It could be enough to kick off some of the creeks and rivers up there. The heaviest rainfall accumulations will be around the Darwin area and then down the coastline down to about Wat Eye in the Northern Territory. Rainfall accumulations in the triple figure realm are possible there and that's not because one day of rainfall is going to come through, it's because we're talking about seven or eight consecutive days of thunderstorm activity. 
Some of these thunderstorms could be severe with damaging winds and heavy rainfall, but for the most part, these are just classic pulse thunderstorm, wet season build-up thunderstorms. We're not talking about anything too crazy, nothing that Queensland would see. These are just convective available potential energy driven sea breeze thunderstorms. And whilst we're on the topic of convective available potential energy, have a look at some of the numbers that we see around this time of the year. Huge values, especially in the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf, I believe it's what it's called here, uh, north of Kununurra and Wyndham in Western Australia. I could be completely wrong on that, but we're talking about values here well above 4,000. And at times I'm no stranger to seeing values around the five or 6,000 mark. The Gulf of Carpentaria is also another hotspot for convective available potential energy. Massive values can develop there. But on that note, that's gonna to have to do it for today's weather forecast update. I do hope you found this video enjoyable and informative. And if you have, then please do consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already as well. They're gonna get longer and longer as the season goes on. We've got more and more stuff to be talking about. I'm not gonna be surprised if I'm gonna be sitting here recording for 20 or 25 minutes shortly. We're definitely talking about a big build up to wet season 2025, 26, especially in the far north with the uh, central and the southeast kind of uh, areas playing catch up a little bit as we get towards late October and into early November. I hope everybody has a great Wednesday, have a great week, and I will catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.